Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today's lecture is about work, mechanical work, and I, and I will be talking about definition of this concept. Uh, I will try to justify it as much as possible, because usually if I open some textbook, not, not all of them, but many, they're just giving the definition as a formula, and basically that's it, without much explanation. I would like to provide certain basis for this definition. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, uh, presented on unizor.com. Um, it's a free course, free for all. And um, also on the, on the same website, you can find um, the prerequisite course for this Physics for Teens. It's Math for Teens. Uh, mathematics is very important and uh, for physics and uh, definitely something like vectors and uh, calculus are used all over the physics so i do suggest you to get comfortable with math maybe using the math for teens course on the same website or anywhere else and um, that would actually make your life much easier as far as the physics studies all right so about the definition of work i will present four different problems and in all these four problems the same um, formula if you wish uh, for work actually um, will be presented as as basically being the basis um, of the problem and that would in my view justify the definition now here's my first problem Let's consider a straight line movement of some kind of a object of the mass m and uh, you have the force, constant force F, acting on this. Um, no friction, no, no any kind of a complication. Now, my purpose is to um, accelerate this particular object from speed it equals to zero to uh, some kind of a speed equals to v. Now, the perfect examples, uh, example is whenever you start the car, um, you basically accelerate during certain amount of time, you do it during certain distance, and then basically it goes with this distance uh, uh, more or less permanently. Well, obviously we are talking about no friction, no traffic lights, or at anything else. So all we are doing, we are accelerating the car, and then it goes by inertia uh, all the way. So, what's the purpose of our acceleration? What's the purpose of applying force, uh, accelerating force to the car? Well, to reach certain speed. Now, more powerful engines are capable of increasing the speed from, let's say, from zero to 60 miles an hour in, I don't know, six seconds. Something like Tesla can do it, let's say, in four seconds. So, we are measuring the performance of the engine, so to speak, in certain, um, let's say, time, uh, which is needed for this particular engine to reach particular speed of a particular car. Now, instead of time, we can use the distance. For instance, one car needs, let's say, 100 meters to reach the speed uh, I don't know, 100 kilometers an hour. Now, a little bit weaker engine um, uh, in the car, and uh, it will be necessary, let's say, 200 meters to reach the same speed. So basically, what I would like to do is to have some kind of a dependency between the force which is applied to particular object, final speed which I would like to achieve, and the distance I have to really apply this force to achieve this particular speed, S. So, that's my purpose. I would like to have some kind of a dependency between F, S and V. Well, and M, obviously. The heavier object, the more difficult it is to, to accelerate it, right? So, what can I 
do to establish this dependency? Well, but let's just apply the, the regular um, uh, uh, second law of uh, Newton and uh, the laws of kinematics, and we will do the following. For, first of all, the first, uh, first is this formula. Now, obviously, this is the second Newton's law. From this, we can define acceleration. Now, knowing the acceleration, I can find uh, the time which is necessary to reach, uh, which is necessary to, to, to cover this distance. So with this acceleration, now this is a regular kinematics formula, I hope you remember it, uh, for um, the movement with a constant acceleration, right? So it's equal to f um, t squared divided by 2m, right? From this we can find, let's say, t, which is equal to uh, 2m s divided by f square root, am I right? So A is F over MT square, and T from here is equal to 2MS divided by F square root. Okay, now, to, to, to find the dependency, we obviously have to connect V and A. If you have an acceleration, now final speed is V, the beginning speed is zero, so that's basically the kinematics of the um, of the uh, final speed, which is equal to f over m, and t is equal to this square root of two m s divided by f. Right. Am I right? Okay, now let's square it. V square is equal to F square divided by M square F two M S. Now M is cancelling, this is cancelling, so it's two F S divided by M. So this is my formula, basically, which connects the V final speed, which we would like to achieve, basically the result of applying the force F. Now, what is the final result? What do I apply it for? Well, I'm applying to achieve this particular speed. So, and this is the formula which relates my final speed with um, the force and the distance during which I have to apply it. Now, what I would like you to do to pay attention to is this product. Let me just put this product as a letter W. So that would be equal to 2W divided by M or we can resolve it for W which means W is equal to MV squared divided by 2. So, it can be interpreted in both ways. If we would like to achieve certain speed, then we would like to spend our resources, which I um, denoted as a letter W. It can be uh, one particular force and one particular um, uh, distance S. Now, we can uh, double the force and um, shorten the distance by half and it will be exactly the same result, right? Because it's the product of force times distance which is important in this case. So that's all I wanted basically to do. So if you have certain amount of resources then you can find certain amount of speed which is, well, certain speed which will be the result of applying uh, these resources. Now if you have given certain speed which you would like to achieve. Now, that's how you can find out how much resources you need to achieve this speed. And resource is the product of force and uh, distance. So, 
either you apply one force and one particular distance or you can double the force and shorten the distance by half or you can half the force and double the distance whatever it is or one tenth of the force and ten times the distance whatever you decide to do so you can do it with a weaker engine on a longer distance or a stronger engine on a shorter distance but anyway it's the product of these force and the distance which is very important to achieve certain speed in this case now let me just instead of achieve certain speed I will rephrase it to achieve certain result so if we would like to achieve certain result as basically um, result of the application of the force on certain distance that's basically the formula which which gives you this type of thing so it doesn't really matter how you achieve it again with a weaker engine on a longer distance or a stronger engine on a shorter distance result will be the same it's the product of force times distance which defines the result or define or, or, or define the result which if given a result then you can basically find out what is your product of the force time distance and basically now I can tell you that this thing is called work now this is a work which is performed by this force during or applied on the distance of uh, s so if the force is applied on the distance s their product is called work and it's from the work your final result depends so if you want to achieve certain result then you can find out what's the work to be applied or if you have the work then that would be your result okay this is my first um, problem which basically introduces the concept of work and what I'm going to do is to give you a couple of more examples which basically uh, either um, make a little bit more universal this formula or just confirm it in some other cases okay first of all to make it just a little bit um, more universal uh, what if you have the force applied at an angle fine if this is the force okay let's say you have a, a toy train for instance which is going on the rails okay this is your toy train and uh, uh, and the child is pulling the train at an angle so what happens? Well, if, 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 if he doesn't really put it too strongly to completely derail it, um, the, the force actually should be divided into two. It should be represented as a sum of two. One component will be along the track, another would be uh, perpendicular to the track, but if the track actually is uh, made of something which resists this thing, obviously there is a resistance, so it does not derail so this force is uh, balanced with the reaction of the reaction of the of the rails right so you can completely ignore this and only this one will act in the direction and this force is equal to if this is phi, uh, if this is phi it would be f times cosine phi so basically it's exactly the same problem as before except we have to consider instead of um, um, force F as in the previous case we have to consider F times cosine F uh, cosine phi so a little bit more universal formula would be this cosine phi that's my second problem again that's not to um, to emphasize basically the, the, the correctness or validity of the, this, this definition I'm just trying to make it a little bit more general to cover this case all right okay so that's my second example now my third example is completely different so what I'm going to do I'm going to uh, use the incline to pull up 
with a certain force onto the height h some kind of an object and I will try to do basically exactly the same what's my purpose my purpose is to lift the object uh, onto the height h now I would like to find out what kind of resources basically what kind of work I have to perform to do it okay how can I do it well obviously there is a weight and the weight must be obviously uh, represented as sum of two vectors one is perpendicular to the uh, inclined and another is against the movement up right now obviously this force would be balanced this force would be balanced to a reaction of uh, the plane and both are balancing each other now to move it up I have to have the force F to be equal to this one to R right if I would like to move it with a constant speed no acceleration just make it simple so let me shorten this vector so it's equal to this one by uh, by magnitude so as soon as my force is equal we start moving no friction right so what is the value of this uh, force which is resisting the movement well if this is an angle phi then this is an angle phi so my r magnitude is equal to weight times sine phi right okay so I have my force by magnitude it's equal to this now what's the length which I'm basically using to uh, what's the distance I have to cover to reach the height h well that's s which is equal to h divided by sine of phi right this is the height and this is the length of hypotenuse and again f times s which is equal to w which is work by definition the force acting uh, along the distance s and it's equal to sine is cancelling out so it will be p times h now that's very important that angle is completely irrelevant here which means you remember how it was with the car slower car longer distance uh, stronger car more powerful engine shorter distance but whatever it is the result which is achieving certain speed depends only on the work well NMS obviously in this case we also have very very similar philosophically similar result I can use a, um, a smaller angle smaller uh, slope more horizontal so to speak which uh, would actually require a less of a force right because if uh, phi is smaller sine phi is smaller so the f will be smaller but the distance would be so much longer and the product is constant it's the weight which is mg if you wish again depends on the mass obviously and the height height is always the same so the the purpose of applying the force and the work are basically related to each other without any additional parameter doesn't matter how I'm lifting my um, my my weight my object I can lift it up and it will be exactly the same thing it will be force would be equal to 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 weight and uh, and the height would be equal to h so it will be again p times h or I can use a slope um, a, a more steep slope or a, or a less steep slope doesn't really matter the product will be exactly the same which means amount of work I have to spend the amount of my resources I have to spend to achieve my goal and the goal is to reach the certain height will actually be exactly the same so again relationship between the purpose the result 
the goal of uh, acting uh, uh, with force and the work which is supposed to be spent like resource to to do it very important relationship again result and work the purpose of applying the force and the work which this force actually performs during certain distance on uh, 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 applying on a certain distance that's uh, my third example and the fourth one again different it's related to rotation and i will show you that in that rotation it's also basically the same thing everything depends on this product of the force and the distance okay um let's imagine you have a carousel and uh, you have tangential force f let's say well children are on the carousel and it's a manual carousel doesn't have any kind of a engine behind it and one of the parents actually holds the carousel at the rim and moves with the carousel trying to speed it up so it's kind of an equivalent to, to the first problem when my, my, when my car actually was speeding to reach to achieve certain uh, linear velocity now in this case i would like this very good parent to speed up the carousel to reach certain um, angular speed and let it go for a while so the kids will enjoy it right so we are talking about a goal of achieving certain angular speed now okay let's um, um, recall our rotational dynamics uh, now the angular speed is equal to acceleration angular acceleration times uh, time in exactly the same way as linear speed is equal to linear acceleration times time okay now my um, uh, linear speed would be omega times r right my linear acceleration would be alpha times r I, uh, sorry yes yes linear acceleration of the rim of the point on the rim right so this is the um, linear speed but this is variable because the omega is variable this is constant because alpha the um, angular acceleration is the same time radius all right so this is radius obviously what else um, now that we are talking about dynamics remember the um, equivalent the rotational equivalent of the second Newton's law it looks like uh, tau which is torque which is equal to F times R it's equal to um, moment of inertia times acceleration so this plays the role of mass in this moment of inertia and this plays the role of linear acceleration for um, second Newton's law but this is basically the um, rotational equivalent all right now um, I will do exactly the same thing as I did for uh, linear acceleration of the car I will try to find the relationship between the force the final uh, angular speed which I would like to achieve um, now instead of mass I will use uh, moment of inertia um, and obviously I have to have the distance this particular parent will follow the the carousel on its rim to speed it up to the angular speed omega so i have to find out this well again the uh, dependency is very much like in the linear case in linear case if you remember it's a times t square over 2 where a is accelerate linear acceleration in this case um, my s would be equal to r alpha t squared divided by 2 because r alpha or alpha r is linear acceleration right 
So I know this. So let's say uh, how I do it. Uh, I'm taking alpha from the first one. So alpha is equal to f times r divided by i. Okay. So I'm substituting to this, and it's equal to r times alpha, which is f r divided by i times t squared divided by 2. Am I right? Now, um, instead of t, I can put this. t is equal to omega over alpha, which is omega over uh, f times r times i, right? From here, alpha. And I can substitute it here. And let's see what happens. Rf, r again, t square, which is omega square i square divided by 2i and square f square r square. All right? So r, 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 f, f. Um, I, I. So S is equal to I omega square divided by 2F. And from here, again, times F, both sides, f times s, which is my w, is equal to i omega square over 2. By the way, very much like in the linear case where I had mass times v square divided by 2. So again, my final result, the purpose of why I'm doing this, which is omega, and work are very much related um, in, in the same way as, as we were basically deriving it before. So, it doesn't matter actually um, uh, what concrete force and concrete distance, what does matter is their product, which is work. So again, you can have a, a weak parent <laughs> who exerts a weaker um, force, but it will take him longer distance to travel to speed up uh, the carousel to the same uh, angular speed omega. So my final result and my work are related. So F and S separately are not as important in this case as their product which is important. So they can change in some way while retaining the same value for their product and that's okay. The result will be exactly the same. So that's why a concept of work is so important. And that's why I think it's perfectly justified to basically define uh, a new physical entity which we call work. And we can define it as product of force and the distance uh, this force is acting. So we are just introducing new concept by definition basically. All I was talking about before was um, to kind of justify that this does make sense because it's from the work actually, the result of the action actually depends more than on individual force. It depends on the, for uh, on, on the work. Okay, now this is in case the force is acting along the trajectory. Now, if it's not, if it's under angle, you have to add the angle phi. So, basically, that's where many definitions uh, in many textbooks end. Well, the problem is it's good for a straight line movement. Um, now, we're, when we are talking about a curved trajectory, 
Well, first of all, the cosine obviously is changing all the time, and uh, so it's not exactly as obvious. So what what is correct thing in this particular case is to take an infinitesimal piece of the trajectory and whatever force acting at that time and multiply them and the cosine of the angle. And what's even better is to consider this piece of trajectory as a vector in which case we don't need the cosine because this is what is called scalar product of two vectors. So if you have a vector f and you have a vector uh, differential basically infinitesimal piece of the distance of the trajectory um, uh, at which point this uh, um, force f is acting and you have their um, uh, scalar product that would be a definition of the differential of the work. So on each infinitesimal piece of the trajectory we can define separately amount of work we are basically trying to perform. And then if we want the entire trajectory, well, we have to do integral from zero to some kind of S maximum, whatever S maximum is. So again, back to mass for teens, you really have to understand basic concepts of vectors and um, and the calculus if you would like to address things in the most rigorous general form. I mean this is good too but obviously you understand this is for a very limited number of cases. Uh, whenever your trajectory is not really a straight line you have to really do something else and the proper definition of the work is using the differentials. So the f is a function of each point at this point it goes this way, at this point it goes this way, it doesn't really matter. It's some kind of a function. And differential is another uh, concept which you have to know. This is a piece, infinitesimal piece of trajectory as a vector. And then their scalar product is a differential of the work, which you have to integrate if you want to know the entire work spent. Okay, basically my purpose was to not just to give you this formula, which is kind of obvious, but to give you some justification and generalization in a more rigorous case. That's it for today. I do suggest you to read um, the notes uh, for this lecture on this unisor.com website. Uh, so the site is free, obviously. Um, well, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.